Each Easter season, when we read and work our way through the Acts of the Apostles, I always am struck and amazed at this moment, this scene that we hear and that we heard today. So often, people will wonder, how can I evangelize? How can I, in my own way, in my own littleness, be a witness and bring the gospel into the world, particularly to those people in my life who I care about and love? Well, this scene and this moment gives us more than an insight shows us an extraordinary path accessible to everyone to be a disciple, to be an evangelist, to go and make disciples of all nations. You see, we have this moment of Paul and Silas who have just been beaten and tortured and now are imprisoned and chained up. And we hear this line about midnight. So they're profoundly uncomfortable. They're not in any kind of normal bed or sleeping arrangement. It's likely very hot. It smells, it's loud, it's uncomfortable. And they're praying and they're singing. They're rejoicing because it doesn't matter their surroundings, all the externalities of the moment and of their life, they know whose they are. They know with absolute certainty how true and real and merciful and loving Jesus is to them. And so they rejoice. And you see, for each one of us, whether we're very strong or weak, whether we're active in the world, in the community, or homebound, whether we are in triumph and rejoicing or in suffering and tribulation, like Paul and Silas, always we can be praising God. And this is such an anomaly. It's such a contradiction. It's so unordinary that all the other prisoners when this momentous earthquake happens and all the doors open and all the chains fall off, no one leaves. You can imagine how incredible this moment is. Here I am in prison, I've done something likely terrible, and suddenly the doors open and all my chains fall off and I think, I'm getting out of here. But these two men, Paul and Silas, in the midst, in the same misery I'm in, are singing and rejoicing, and giving glory to God. And it's so captivating, and fascinating, and incredible that no one moves. They think, I need to see and to meet those two people. And as Paul and Silas would say, not to meet them in themselves, but that they could tell them who it is who gives them this strength and this power and this joy, no matter what is going on, and it's Jesus. And so we're encouraged and we're inspired to recognize that in our own way, particularly in our own little way, that we, that you and I, can be a witness in the world of the joy and the grace and the mercy that Jesus is and that he brings. No matter what's going on, I can be thankful. I can be grateful. I can come before him with thanksgiving. That's why we gather every day, because we're grateful. And people notice. The prisoners notice. And people notice you. And so we're encouraged and we're inspired by Paul and Silas that every one of us, without exception, that even you can be a witness, an evangelist in the world of how real and gracious 
and redemptive Jesus is. That his cross where we can bring ourselves, our whole messed up dysfunctional self, and he knows and desires and loves and forgives. The truth and the identity as being a beloved, a beloved son or daughter that everyone desires and needs.